Fuckers. What's happening? David Elliott. Not much. Shane Toad. We got... Alright, let me, let me paint the picture for the listeners right now using nothing. Oh, 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 that's embarrassing. Oh, no. That's embarrassing. He's watching his Some own of my videos. own comedy. <laughs> He's watching his own content. <laughs> Very funny. Very funny. Just wrote a video today when we should have been doing something else. We've been literally paid to do something yep, else. We are. And I wrote a video and we just made it and we uploaded it. Because we're creators. We're creators. And tonight and every night, we're acting superstars. Yep. We've been on, working on a little project, Davy Boy, yep. a little acting project. A little acting project. Yep. And you weren't um, late today. You were an hour early, which fact, is great. Yeah. I was 15 minutes late on day one. And Can I, I tell you what you've been late? Yeah, sure you can, man. So we had a read through at the end of last week, and <laughs> me and Dave the night before, when I was doing Pug Uglies for the big guy, I said, Should we meet a bit earlier tomorrow and have a coffee before the read through? Hmm. And Dave was like, Yes, brilliant idea. I'll give you a ring whenever I'm leaving the house. So I go, Okay, sounds good. I'm dri- <laughs> I'm driving down the normal road. This thing starts at nine, it's ten to nine. No. I'm driving down the normal road. I think. Oh, he hasn't rang me yet, but maybe he'll ring me in like one minute and say, let's let's get a takeaway and bring it in. So I'm about to ring him and say, listen, I might be there at like two minutes past nine and I'm freaking out. I phone the Stonehead, that's how the conversation goes. He's like, hello, as relaxed as anyone could be. <laughs> I said, hello, are you already there? Dave goes, nah, just drop my daughter off, just leave my mum and dad's. Yep. I said... Are you gonna be? Are you gonna be there? Because that's in banger. <laughs> like, are you gonna be there on time? And I Him? said, yeah, of course. Yeah, he goes. <laughs> three words, plenty of time. Okay. Nah, I said, man, I'm gonna be late. So how are you gonna make it from banger? <laughs> I can see the BBC. And then he says, is it not half nine? I said, no, it isn't. He said, oh fuck, I'm gonna be late. He arrives <laughs> at nine forty. By the no, way, when I get there, liar, nine thirty, sitting nine fifteen. No, you weren't there yes. at 9.15. I was there at 9.15. Bullshit. I was there at 9.15. Whenever, you weren't, but whenever I got there, by I the was, way, when I got there like a couple of minutes past 9.15, I was nine, there at 9.15. Everybody was ready 9:15. to go. 9.15. And I felt so 9.15. Bad. <laughs> I was there at 9.15. Okay, okay. I felt so bad about being a couple of minutes late. Mm. And then I just remembered. <laughs> I remember Captooth was still <laughs> in a different county. I was like, oh, I'm sweet. And yeah. then you arrived and then we were doing a read through and everyone had their scripts out and there was fine actors there and then there was me and you winging it just trying to blag our way through it and everyone was doing some lines and it came time for Dave's line and then all I heard was this and I went Dave and he goes oh yeah and he did his line <laughs> but today he made up for it thank he you. was one hour early and I did well for my lines you were really thank good you. thank you mate appreciate honestly, that honestly mm-hmm. probably better than Joaquin Phoenix and Joker thank you you were I really mean, good. listen, Wang King Phoenix overacted. Sounds I a bit think. like Wang King Phoenix. Wang King Phoenix is actually a Chinese, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> the Wang it's King the year Phoenix, of the Wang King yeah. Phoenix. But, <laughs> <laughs> podcast name, write it down, Ben. But anyway, um, you you surprised, You did a couple of things that were very notable for me today. Not, oh, not your acting, which was really oh, good. Okay, thanks. What was this? I'm keen to hear this because you haven't fully told me yet. Three things. Them. Number one. You started mimicking without knowing it's somebody's accent in the room. <laughs> it's so disrespectful to do that. What's he, the producer? Yeah, the producer Luke has a Scottish accent because he's Scottish. <laughs> and he was like, uh, all right, guys, are we all good with the script? <laughs> Dave? Aye, we're all good with the script. See, see you during the week. Uh, Dave just stopped. And I know he doesn't know he's doing it. And I'm looking <laughs> at him going... Why are you doing his voice though? Yeah. And then you're like, alright. But that wasn't the weirdest thing. You I did. know, the most awkward thing was was it the, the first day he was Chinese. <laughs> no, no. Know. You did. In, <laughs> how many years have we known each other? About Probably eight? about. Yeah, about eight years. Maybe more. Yeah, maybe more. No, yeah. No, ben, yeah, about that. About ben, eight. in the short time you know, you know Dave, would you say he's a weird guy? Done a couple of weird things, said some things, maybe make you go, oh, did it, someone say that out loud? Maybe a bit more added and work for Ben than's necessary on a podcast, let's just say. He outdaved yeah, no. himself today. Oh, he said something out loud that made me, right, who, <laughs> uh, it takes a lot to embarrass me. Yeah. I had to just uh, walk away from the conversation. <laughs> I just walked away and was somewhere else because I couldn't look at him. So there's like six of us acting in this thing. Six actors. Yes. No, so four actors and us. I'd say you've got three main actors mm-hmm. and Dave and I would part, form part of like the second wave, yeah. if you like. So one of the actresses 
is going through some lines. Dave obviously arrives on time today. He's making a really good impression. People yeah. are chatting. They're yeah. like, Fuck, this guy's motivated. <laughs> He's keen to work. He's a really nice guy. Dave starts doing these kind of like <laughs> karate kicks in the air. All right, and he's a bit fidgety. Uh, and he turns to one of the actresses, who he has never met, and says, you're lucky I don't know you better. And she says, what do you mean? And Dave says, because I feel like farting on your head. Ben, nobody laughed. She didn't laugh, and she said, Oh, I hope you never get to know me that well. And Dave said, Ah, yeah, probably for the best. And kept doing his karate kicks. And I went to a different part of the room. For someone who is late the first day, then gets in on them. Oh, you're lucky I don't know. You better have farted on your head. Where where did it come from? Like, I've known you for that long. If you said that to me, I'd be no, like, The what fuck are you talking doing? about? The karate, <laughs> the karate moves I was doing involved me lifting my left leg. Yes. So it did look like I was pointing my ass a bit. Yeah. So it wasn't just like, but it was just it looked like I was aiming my ass. It wasn't like I'd fart in your head. It was yeah, like, he was walking about like a cartoon skunk. <laughs> so I just thought, like, she looked at me like, What's he doing? The karate was, farter? And I just, the way I lifted my left leg. My cheeks were there and it looked like I could have farted on her. Yeah. That's what I meant. Yeah, it's you like, could have, but you, you didn't know, need to verbalise that. It's like, watch out, am I fart on you here? Yeah, Whoa. You also <laughs> said it like a paramilitary threat. <laughs> you watch out, I'll fart in your head. It was yeah. so utterly, utterly bizarre from you. <laughs> yeah. Then also, another weird thing Definitely is... Definitely odd. Um, we had a bit of a break for lunch. The sandwiches came in. NBC. Oh, I can eat that. <laughs> I had to leave. I had to go yeah. get my own lunch. Not that I had to, but I decided I would. Yeah. I said, how long have I got for lunch? They said, about an hour. I skulked off to Nando's. Solo Nando's. Dave texts me. He's due in at five. That's at like three. He texts me. Where are you, mate? I said, I'm in Nando's. He goes, by yourself? I said, yep. He goes, does that make you sad? I said, not really. Not really no. Then he said, look up. He tapped the window and he was at the window beside where I was eating my food. <laughs> just doing karate moves, just stretching. To like <laughs> if it wasn't a pane of glass here, I just <laughs> fart right on here. So how weird. Yeah. How I mean, weird. Are you in a weird mood? Is everything alright? Yeah, I mean, it makes me, me think that like, um, you know, maybe some of the Me Too guys weren't actually Me Too guys. They just said weird things because they were nervous on, on set. No, you I know. think they were... Yeah, you think Weinstein was farting them? Yeah, like, I mean... <laughs> no, I think maybe, like, Weinstein, instead of just doing karate moves, he jacks off. Right. Are you saying you that know? we should have done farting? Yeah, instead? he should have just gone, here, listen, I might just fart in you, and they might be like, Harvey, what do you like? But instead, he, he just did, did other stuff. Yeah, he's dick. Yeah, it's just negative energy, or, like, nervous energy. Right. You know, it's just nervous energy. Yeah, I get it, nervous energy, that you might do a little fart, but it's not nervous to tell people that you're going to do it on them but while hey, doing karate. But, hey, listen... I just, You're like a gassy Mr. Miyagi. I needed to just stretch out. You <laughs> yeah. know, I just needed to stretch out. And I, I just I just felt like... I mean, I felt in my head that the karate was weird to look at. Yeah, <laughs> so all I thought, of it was weird. That's why yeah, I left. So that's why I thought I had to speak to explain what I was doing. And then it just it got weirder. Yeah, it? yeah, it got weird. But, but yeah, like, it, was, it was good fun. And now we're all mates. We're all mates. It's a historic day. Why is that? It's a very. We should have done a live boy town episode tonight Where at would midnight. Where did from? Stormont. All right, okay. Because tonight, obviously, you'll be listening to this a couple of days later. But tonight, or you'll never get to listen to this because Northern Ireland will have ended. They'll just be an all-out war. But hopefully, you do get to listen to this, and boy town gets immunity. Maybe boy town can be a safe mm-hmm. space for people. Okay, well, I mean, take refuge. It's a small space, and we do have all the alien studies next door. Yeah, it's so true. There's not a lot of room, like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. Yeah. So as of. I might have this wrong. As of midnight tonight, as of midnight tonight, you have to marry somebody of the same sex. Uh, and you get is it gross. is it five abortions for a pound? Five abortions for a pound, and you have to marry gays. Yeah. Um, Stinking. So it was so funny that we were in that room today, and then all the BBC breaking news mm-hmm. screens were out in the reception, yeah. and we just kept walking past it, just watching the world end, be like, "Oh, nice." And then yeah. back into our room when you farted on people. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, what the sad thing is, our, our great project might even get out there. What project? The, the fart, karate farts. All right. right. Uh, we'll, 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 I was going to say we'll come fast, be allowed at Storm, but it's going to be. I mean, listen, It's going to be day to day. People no, won't raise an eyelid at that now. 
Now, once once the gays get married, I don't know what's next. I honestly don't know what ne- what's next. Common decency has reached its threshold. Do you, have you been watching news today, Ben? Can you inform us any more about this? I haven't watched news today. Oh, oh! I just feel like if gay people can get married, the next thing there will be gay married couples, and that yeah, that would be the logical step that, if gay people can freaks, get married. That freaks me out. Why does it freak you out? Because then you'll be like, oh. Because you have to divorce your wife? Because then you'll be like, to a, a gay man, you'll be like, oh, how's your wife? You'll be like, oh, it's my husband. And you go, <laughs> yeah. what? That makes no sense. <laughs> it's so weird to me. I don't know. Oh. We, it, be, being serious, if any listeners of this podcast want to get married in a gay way and would like us to officiate <laughs> and a, a genuine, but I, I mean that as a genuine thing, we yeah. will do it. That would yeah. be unbelievable. Yeah. A boy like if you're if you listen to Boy Town podcast and you're gay, we'll do your wedding. Or listen, I think people are making Master like DJ said at the I end. I think people are making this whole gay marriage thing a bit too serious. If for banter you want to marry your mate, because you can now. <laughs> <laughs> we'll officiate as well. You don't have to be gay, you can just be married. Like I wanted to marry my housemate Daniel many moons ago because when I thought I would die single I wanted someone to get my Playstation yeah yeah. you know I thought yeah. he played it the most with me it would be good and also would be funny if I did say make the love of my life and I wanted to get married and I was like I can't get married he's yeah, like why just already a, married just let you know your wife listens to this podcast so maybe don't say if I met the love of my life that's what I, I meant if I was married to him and then I met her you know what I mean yeah she is love of my life let me just point that out yeah but if I met her and she's like, let's get married, I'd be like, oh, well. See, see when you you and her Ox. first started texting and, uh-huh. and, and you know you were like, hey, I'm Dave, and she texted you back, whatever. Yeah, no, was it was. weird when she turned around and you were out the window? Hello. Yeah. And you went, oh, yeah. <laughs> she was like, what was that last bit? He's a weird joint. So I'm like, yeah. yeah. But do you think right enough that like, is it all about to kick off? I don't want to think about it. It worries me. I mean, I think, I think people need to put the fucking stupidity at the back of the head and realise you know, things are more important than identity. You know, like education, health, you know, putting food on the table hummus. for your families, hummus and not having the and not having to have troubles. I don't want fucking troubles. And you know what? Listen here. The flag <sighs> protest, the people are thinking mm. it's gonna be protests bigger than that. It was the biggest fucking waste of time. Do you know what I mean? It was just like irritating. People are blocking roads, just like go home. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Spend a bit of time with your family. It's mad that even you can say that because you climbed City Hall listen, to put it back up. Listen, didn't you? listen. I changed my view on things. At the beginning, I was furious. <laughs> yeah. you know, I went, I was going down to dig people to form them. You know why the wee bit of glass at City Hall was broken where the woman went, yeah. no surrender. That was my head. <laughs> fucking, fucking. No, it head. wasn't your head. <laughs> no, it was fucking. Because her head got through it. I know, but it was, I was just not happy. But then, uh, I mean, it's like, are more important things in life yeah. and we need to realise that here we have a piece for last 20 years let's not blow that up guys let's not ruin that you know over something stupid you know <laughs> that's the whole country clapping yeah. along no, are you okay no I listen revoke gay marriage <laughs> alright let's see common sense here you know if gay people can get married you know I think all straight people should divorce oh, without, wow. without a protest I'm willing to divorce as a protest of gay marriage and also that'll free can you divorce too in a week yeah let me ask you if you marry mm-hmm. these people okay if Barra best Barra's good egg yeah maybe he would I think he's a pretty, pretty cool guy always smells good Good bit of banter. Would you marry uh, Maliki Kush, singer? No. I think he's been through a lot recently, and I, and I think he's maybe not in the best health. Ronan Keating? Yeah. Here's the thing about Ronan Keating. I don't think he's ever had a haircut that suits him. And I think he knows that. You can see it in his eyes. I mean, I'm going to disagree, and I'm going to say the longer, longer nah, hair he had nah. when he had the wee earring in. Nah. But what would be great, I'd be like the Ronan. Ronan, I can do a better Ronan than you can do. I can do a bit. Well, I can do a better Ronan than you can do, so... Well, that's... I mean, the last time we did that, we did the shag off. And I won. That's the best shaggy. And <laughs> you know, right. you're really embarrassed. It's amazing how you can speak right to my heart. Doesn't sound anything like Ronan. Sounds like Gary Lightbody no, trying doesn't. to do a Ronan. Yeah, by does. the way, by the way, yeah. Ah, that's a scrub to you, ah, bad boy. You gave me the cold, you fucker. <laughs> well, you know, that's fair enough. You're just Give me the, the sniffles, fucker. You're just de- deflecting that terrible Lightbody Ronan. But also, it's I'm superhuman else. because... I had the cold. I woke up as, as soon as my NI tour leg finished Friday night. 
I woke up on Saturday morning with the cold and I went, oh, oh no, I'm filming all next week. Uh-huh. I'm going to have a wee red nose and look stupid on TV mm-hmm. in two different programs. Yeah. But what happened? You stole I your wife's foundation. Cream. What? I slept with pseudo cream on my nose all night and now I don't have a red nose. That's baby. that's not a thing. You yeah. Oh yeah, no. it is. No, is it pseudo cream in your nose? Okay. Or is this, okay. Is this another Todd life? Hack? Okay. Number two. Have I right, had the okay. cold for a couple of days? Yeah. Do I have the wee red nose to go with it? No, I fucking don't. Yeah, but because I slept with pseudo on. cream on my face. Here's me in the middle of the night. See if you rob my house. Yeah. You, I would come down the stairs. You would shit yourself because you'd be like, "The fuck is this guy? Cook, cook boy, Just white all over me." <laughs> is it fair to say your skin and your nose is the same skin as that's on a baby's arse? Yeah. Is that why you put pseudo cream in your nose? That's why I went away for the procedure in Palma. Well then, there you have it. That's why. But I mean, again, I think that's another Shane Todd life hack. So you've got the the chicken licking, you've got the the pseudo cream nose. What else do you have? The oil in the car. That's a life hack. Just <laughs> how much oil do you put in the car? Just a fucking full full container of it. You know the oil. You can never is like have that. too much. Yeah. Turns out you can. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I would love to sit down and just have a load of life hacks. I think sure. I approach life like some sort of Victorian socialite female. I'm like. Oh, uh, my car needs oil. Oh, I'll put it all in. No, I feel like Cold, you... pseudo cream. Oh, I feel like you... On your bones. No. <laughs> on I, your hooter. <laughs> what I will say about you is... Oh, red nose, come here. You, in, you invest in what you believe is right. Wholeheartedly. Amen, brother. Even though it's probably wrong. 90% of your brain goes, <laughs> I think I'm wrong here. But you'd rather just go, listen, we'll check it out. Like a time... <laughs> in Dublin Airport, we were sitting. We were literally, we were back. literally sitting having coffee beside the gate. We're having a fry. We should have been up right beside the gate. I had checked. I had checked. Yeah, and then we're walking around. We're Sorry, going, I actually said to you, relax. We've got time. Get a no, fry. No, get a pint. The most infamous thing about that, as we were about walking for about ten minutes <laughs> to the other terminal, <laughs> I actually tapped you in the shoulder and did. The classic line from the Troubles with the 80s. I looked at you right in your face and went, are you sure you're definitely not going to make a bollocks here? And you went, me make a bollocks? Cut yourself on. And then we walked through another customs area and we're like, no, listen, we shouldn't be through this. There, we, we, we already got through the check-in back yeah. there. And yeah. you're like, no, no, it's grand. Yep. And we went to the entire wrong terminal. So we walk, for, Dublin Airport has two big terminals and we walk from the edge of Terminal 1 to the back of Terminal 2, no, the see, length of the airport. You're entirely wrong. We left from Terminal 2 and walked to the very beginning of Terminal 1. Yes. To and the very first plane that's ever flown from there to Ryanair. And then I stopped at the last screen in the corner of the airport and I looked up on it and I realised instead of looking at the gate, I was looking at the flight number and I turned around to you like the exorcist, like my whole neck turned around like an owl and I just looked at you and went, I've made a boo-boo. And what did you say? Nothing. You just stared at me and went, walk. And then I walked and then we were both, I was doing a wee mummy's power walk. Mm -hmm. You were power walking. You were livid. Yeah. I come back. Do you know why why you were so annoyed? Sorry to interrupt. Like Kanye at the BMA. Because I had had blisters already from that long walk. The reason you were so annoyed is because I had to keep turning around to you and going, hurry up and I knew that was making you so mad because otherwise you weren't going to make her kid mm-hmm. but I fucked up so bad and then I was like we fucking come on and you were fuming and I turned back and I took your wheelie case and I was like mm-hmm. don't worry I'll take that and I sprinted with two cases I get to the gate they literally like I'm not making this up they had the hand to close the boarding door I ran up and they were like thank god we've been waiting on you and I said yep but I'm here on time and they went mm-hmm. where's your travel companion and I said He's coming. And she said, How long will he be? And I said, I know what he like. I'll ring him. Mm-hmm. I phoned, by the way, I have both our passports. Yeah. Remember? So I was going to get on. So if I had got on, <laughs> he wouldn't have been able to get on because I'd had his passport. They wouldn't have waited. I phoned Dave whenever I was standing at the thing. I ring him. This is, this is what I hear. Yes. I went, Hello, can I just get a wee ETA on uh, when you might arrive? Because they're holding the door open for us. I'm turning the corner. I'll be 30 seconds. He comes round the corner. No facial expression. Doesn't speak to the cabin crew. Gets straight on. We sit down in our seats. I turn around to him and go, (laughs) when will this be funny? Uh And you went, it's funny now. Uh 
but I fucking hate you. <laughs> yeah. You know when you're so annoyed at somebody, you're beyond wanting to beat them up? Yeah, and I you're said... I said, if we missed that, would you like? Would you have gone on a flight like tomorrow if I paid for it or whatever? Mm. Nope, I would have gone home. And he, and you meant that, didn't you? Yeah, but the only thing was, as well as having my passport, using my car keys. I had your car keys. That's yeah, right. So oh I had my had God. A, oh no, live in the airport. Like, would you fall at me? Like, yeah, I would have got a taxi. Tom Hanks home. living in the airport. Mm-hmm. In Dublin Airport. In Terminal. What's the film called? Is it Terminal or something? The Terminal, yeah. What's yeah. that Terminal? I would have, What's that wee Terminal listen, film called? The Terminal? Listen, don't, don't make a joke about that. It's still not worth... It's still a bit about. raw. Yeah. I would have just got the bus home and I wouldn't have spoken to anybody. Oh my God. Do you know what would have been so funny? The idea of you having to go home and then a couple of days later, you know when I was just driving your car down the airport. <laughs> uh, like, what was it? Is it Father Ted when he kicked Bishop Brennan in the arse? Yeah. Bishop Brennan just sat? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. There was no. Them, that was me. You were just an angry dad, and I think I bought you a couple of beers on the plane when you yeah, were kind And I mean, listen, I took the edge off. Yeah. But yeah. I had blisters for the whole trip because. What's the mo- Is that the most angry at me you've ever been? It has to be, surely. Yeah, I'd say so. It's dead. No, well, there's that <laughs> and one other time. The time that oh, no. we quit Boytown for six weeks was on a par when we were doing the radio show. Yeah. And I was really stressed out with stuff in life generally and work. And we had to had to be such a strict schedule. I had to leave work early to get here to record Boytown to be in Belfast for six to do the radio show, and I just really fought to get all my work done for the day. Got in the car, headed back here to come in. Rang you. Where are you? He goes, oh, I just bumped in the mate and I'm having a coffee. And I just went, well, fuck you. I'm going to Belfast. I'm not fucking. And you were like, oh, chill out. We're, you know, it's no run. I was like, no. I don't remember that. I was so angry at you. Did we do the podcast? Nope. That was the end of it for six weeks. I said I'm not doing it. I was either quitting that or the radio show. I said I'm not fucking doing this anymore. I was so angry. Like I literally, I think I punched the steering wheel like seven times. I was furious. Well, I think we we said that like because we took six weeks. New listeners might not know this. Ben probably don't even know this. Did you do the podcast when we did it? Uh, when we were doing Radio Ulster last time? No, I started just after you came back. You started yeah. after we came back. You, ben, you were there for the the re resurgence of Boytown because. A lot of that probably is to do with you, but, uh, but well, it's me and you, Ben. But uh, when we did like a six week run on Radio Ulster, we I think we started doing the podcast and that, and we would do them on the same day, mm. and they both suffered, and we just said, let's just park Boytown for six weeks. Yeah. And I reckon it took us a year to get it back to where we left it off. And what are we like the minute, Ben? Doing well. We're doing. Still climbing. We're doing well. We're climbing, and you know what would help us climb more. If you fuckers give us your money. Yep. It's not the pitch yep. for Patreon.com slash Boytown Podcast. We take we look after our Boytown listeners. Mm. We've got a little pre- Christmas present for them. That's all under wraps. Ben, can you get up the Patreon people? Yep. Please. And I'll and I'll read I'll sing them. Sing and them you know but then bam bam and people Patreon. Oh, you're just Patreon people. But when you support the podcast, it goes towards the studio equipment. It goes towards our studio rent. It goes towards our massages. Uh, and look, I have a microphone and I can move. Yeah, but don't. No, people like it. You, I... Ben, Ben, just to just to comfort you more. You know the way we have to tell him off for where he is based on the mics. Oh, don't worry, he does that in radio too. And someone said to him, and I said, "Hey, yeah, story of my life." And you know what? You need a you need an old Victorian steel contraption that keeps your head in place. Like something out of saw. Yeah. Well, why don't you just get a fucking microphone attached to an NFL helmet and put it on me? <laughs> Wouldn't that just be a fucking problem solved? <laughs> you were helmet most of the day anyway, didn't you? Yep, absolutely. That's why I could get the DLA, brother. Patreon people, go. Make sure I don't type P in the band search engine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, no. Here we go. Give me a beat. Boom. 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 Cameron Vance, Connor Doran, Donald O'Reilly, Jamie Harrison, Jonathan Campbell, Leanne, Marcus Brothers, Mark McGloin, Matt Rooney, Matthew Gilchrist, Matthew McPolin, Matthew Mernon, Niall, Orla Bradley, Patrick Meenan, Peter Harris, Rubus, Richard McClay. Ah, uh, Richard McClay, Dick Clay. They Get are the Dick Patreon McClay. people. And we salute you. We salute you a lot and, and, and we're really grateful for it. But listen, you know what we're going to start doing? Do we look like a, a pair of dinner ladies? Yes. And are they hungry, yes. those Patreons? Yes. We're going to dish them out some exclusive content. So. Yeah, some gruel, some podcast We're actually gruel. due to do a 
Patreon podcast soon. We'll probably do that next week. Patreon podcast. Yeah, we'll record we'll that next, next week. week. Yeah, and you know what? I'm so much freer next week. Or Pat- I'm not. <laughs> Patreon people, send us messages, questions on the Patreon, and we will answer those on the Patreon podcast next week. Send us money and hugs and kisses and noodles. Okay, guys, this is this is admin of the podcast, but uh, but on. Um, Monday? No, fuck. Uh, Thursday? Ah, uh, uh, fuck. What? No, Wednesday. Podcast next Wednesday. That's the only day I can do. Sorry to throw it out there. I don't know if I'm free then, but... We'll replace you! Listen. I am the backbone of the podcast. Nope. Yep, I'm the nope. life. You're not, you're, yeah. the, you're the little saggy elbow. Listen... You're the elbow sag. You know what? You can make into a vanny. How did last week's podcast with Mickey do? Shit. Very well. It didn't do very well. Did. Did very well. Yeah, well, the 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 bitch is back. uh, Kieran Bartlett, too. It did really well. Yeah, that's because a lot of people these days are having trouble sleeping because of Brexit, so they stuck it on. Well, they need something because you don't do the Shane podcast anymore, so. Yeah, uh, I do. I (laughs) missed one week. Oh, well. I missed one week and it's Uh, back this week, baby. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I want to talk about sex. One thing, Ben. What time we at? Twenty-six. Twenty-six. I want to talk about something. We're gonna devote a lot of time to listeners' questions because they deserve it. Man, there's only three this week. No, there's not. There is. Swear to go on Twitter and Instagram. Yeah. No, there's not. Yeah, there is. Isn't there only three questions? Four or five. Why? Because they're game Marcy. Yeah, probably. Fuck no, shit. Joke. I'm only joking, there's loads, but you're, yeah, I imagine there was three. <laughs> oh no, how are we getting 20 minutes out of this? Uh, <laughs> uh, what do you prefer? Would you like bacon toes or sausage fingers? Shag, uh, Mary Cow. <laughs> Arnie. <laughs> Jerry always, Adams. Always. And Stephen Nolan. Always. No. Uh, oh, so disrespectful of them. Why? No, because people genuinely ask oh, those yeah. questions. <laughs> <laughs> what? Ah. People wake up in the middle of the night. Give me my phone off the charger. I have a question for these boys. You like this one, lads? Are you well enough? <laughs> Do you support the Republic or no one aren't? Mm, what school did you go to? <laughs> did you get any Ram Plus? Nah, fuck off. I don't uh, how funny was the message Colin sent the group about uh, a guy saying he saw Mickey, a lookalike of Mickey, in Blue uh. Chicago? <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, so basically the background of this story is Colin sent the message in our group chat being like, this guy sent me a message going like, I've just seen the best lookalike of Mickey Bartlett of all time and sent him the photos and guess what? <laughs> it was Mick. And then Colin's like, oh yeah man, that, that is him though. And the guy was like, no, oh no, no it's not, no. but it's a great look. Like Colin's like, no it's him. Like. Because what the thing was, in a coincidental manner, <laughs> There was just a complete <laughs> double of Mickey's girlfriend there with this doppelganger. Like, whoa. And they, the Mickey looked like he was wearing a Bonneville t shirt. Yeah. Got that right as well. <laughs> and a Peaky Blinders hat. And he had Mickey's head and face. Yeah. Uh, but then, yeah, the guy was arguing with Colin. Yeah. Right? And then, no, but, but why argue with him? He goes, no, this guy's hers quite dark. Mickey's a full ginger, isn't he? And Colin was like, nah, it's Mick. Like, it's fully. That's Mickey. Um, and I mean, I don't, Colin's not the kind of guy that has much much time for debate is he or, or people no he's not stupid. gonna he's not gonna lie on his front with his hands under his chin and go back and forth with you about whether someone I mean, is mickey or not when it is mickey i tell you what i would like to see would be calling lying <laughs> a bespoke photo yeah, shoot oh, I, I would love funded to see by that. the listeners of boytown podcast yeah, that's what the patreon money's going on a, a photo shoot with <laughs> mr jadis i would like to see you and colin side by side on a hotel bed doing that remember that picture of you over the shoulder where you're lying on your front you can oh, just my see bare bum. your bum mm-hmm. oh everyone's seen that photo haven't they <laughs> you made me tweet that Who, was it Emma Pankelly you made me send it to you back in the yeah, day yeah probably yeah. she'll be raging tonight no she's alright but the G's yeah, she doesn't mind the G's and the L's doesn't, doesn't like the, the, the B and the D and the Q's <laughs> fuck that yeah but she's alright with those dudes uh, you know I just want to point out for any new listeners my uh, my chat earlier about the gags was a joke you know everyone knows I'm very gay I'm very <laughs> fond of of all people providing a sound. If you're if you're gay and a twat, I don't like you. But I mean, if you're gay and sound, as in if you're dude, you're making some great sexual and sound. You know, like you just don't be a dickhead. We used to seriously I get away from before. my material. I've said this before, right? You're do, a do little, not grab me by the car. How dare you? You're punks. a little boy who's discovered his cock for the first time. 
you oh, can't fucking listen, help it. Listen, Touching it, on. licking it. Look, what, what's Ben paid to do? He's a producer, and why does my mic move when I touch it? But Ben's why are you fix it? Why are you setting up a Takeshi's Castle style obstacle course of editing for? Because him? I love Takeshi. He's the best rapper that has ever been, and he's in jail under false pretense. So fuck you for bringing that up. Do you, being serious, right? Yeah. And then I'll leave it. Do yeah. you know you're doing it? No. Right. Well, but watch why? this because this is you. Watch this. Uh, yeah, so Ben and uh, you know, I just want to say this, and then, and then you go back here, ben. and then you come here, and then the mic goes there, and you go here, and then you do a little bit of it like this, and then you're back in here. Ben told me he gave me this lever to lever my mic when I move, <laughs> so I fucking do it now. <laughs> shout at me, you know, fuck you, Ben, and fuck you, Shane. <laughs> fuck you both. Hey, no, this is a podcast of love. No, it's not a podcast okay, love. He's... Don't kiss me with your gross fingers. Get away. I'm not going to kiss you with my fingers. No, I don't like the smell. And they smell unclean. I mean, get them away from me. They smell like, I don't know, some sort of fucking Yeah, ca- they smell like cash, baby, because I'm just doing that. Yeah, you know there's more shit on cash than anything in the world? Shit? Why did you say shit? Because the shit's shit. <laughs> there's more shit on cash than Ben, what's the score in the Arsenal match? Fuck's sake. Oh, no, guys, we're not fucking Oh, no, podcast. it's 1-0 well to Sheffield United, is it? Sheffield United! Oh, oh no. Sheffield United! I don't know any of their songs. We are Sheffield United. We're a football team. We are Sheffield United. <laughs> we are the cat with the cream. Not done. <laughs> you're not done, dude. Dude, you're not done. Come on, get back into it. Come on, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Ben, close your ears. I need to put my knob, my sheath back on the black member here. Oh, not only is the distance from the mic far away, he's dismantling the mic as he goes. Oh, okay. All right, we're back in the room. Positive, uh, <laughs> positive energy. Well, we need to talk about a friend. Someone that's going to bring us back together. Nelson Mandela. No. Nelson McCoslin. No. <laughs> oh. No. Hey. They only want the, the, a huge... Fr- Someone call him the Chancellor of Come in Boytown. He There's was in One man. Direction. He wears Louis frilly Thomas. gear. Nope, Harry Styles. Just stop your crying, it's a sign of the time. We got to get away. Uh, nope. No. So, <laughs> two big stories have come out about Harry this week. Number one, Harry has a stalker. Ben, push the mic closer to me because I'm not allowed to touch it anymore. <laughs> no, it's on a, on a pivot, <laughs> Benjamin. It pivots. Jeremy pivots. I'm going to tell you something very funny about this Harry Styles story. I'm chilling right You here. will like it. So, who, if you had to stalk one person, like, what's a musician or, like, who's the musician you love the most? Because you love some bands a lot. Jim McCarran's. Who's that? She's a guard from my secondary school. No, come on. Oh, no, I just made that name up. Who's, a, rock, true, who's a rocker you really like? <laughs> the Darkness. I okay, think Justin Darkness. Hawkins, is that a name? Yeah. Ooh, ooh. I believe it, I'm in go love. <laughs> so disrespectful to great vocals that he does. <laughs> so, Har- Harry Styles has gotten a bit of bother. He's had a stalker for he's about a year. He's stalking? No, he's been stalked. Oh, no. Zane trying to get back with him. A home. You, by the way, you know from the start of this, mm-hmm. it's going to be a story you'll like. Okay. And the listeners will like. A homeless man convicted of stalking Harry Styles after camping outside his house has been banned from going within 200 metres of the singer. Sly? Styles said he felt scared and very uncomfortable by, and by the way, the most uh-huh. boytown name ever, Pablo Taragaza Orario, <laughs> who posted notes and money through Harry's letterbox. That's what you would do. <laughs> it's a very you thing. <laughs> okay, like, so, fair play to him, the guy's homeless. He's got no dough and he's posting all he has. It's like the story from the Bible, you know? <laughs> Tara Gaza Orero denied the charge, previously telling the magistrates that the star had propositioned him. <laughs> oh yeah, this sounds evil. The sexiest guy in the world out there looking for homeless guys. Yeah. Uh, you're like this, right? Uh, hold on. Good, the story is prepped them, my man. <laughs> so, I thought it was sad. Harry said, I thought it was sad that someone so young was sleeping rough at a bus stop when it was cold. Yeah. Styles brought him food and then stopped interacting with him on the advice of security staff because of the man's odd behaviour. What Despite did he do? cutting contact, Styles said he would, he would, the guy would post money through Harry's door. Uh, then, here, yeah. The man said Harry Styles propositioned him and claimed he was told, let's come to a hotel, let's have some fun. Or something like that. Was it Gary Barlow? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Harry was giving Gary a lift. Um, I just got an email from the Patreon team. Uh, no. But yeah, do you think, like, obviously it's terrible to stalk someone, but you can sort of understand. Yeah. In a way, like, because Harry is beautiful. But you yeah, shouldn't but stalk him. But I mean, is Harry being a wee bit of a twat? 
No, no, if you're being what? stalked. All the guy was doing was posting notes and money through his door. No, he camped outside his house for a year. <laughs> 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 and he said he was trying to lure him to a hotel. <laughs> but I mean, the guy's homeless. Yeah. So Harry probably has a pretty sweet lawn. Yeah. So, uh, where was it that you stalking him? Was it the UK? Was not it the UK, I think, UK. But you know the, well, the you know that's not the weirdest story that's come out about Harry Styles this week. Well, what was it? Though? So Harry's had some like bespoke designer doing a lot of very like tailored tour outfits that are kind of like you've seen the blousy, yeah. frilly things that Harry likes to wear. You know when he's performing, and uh, the the designer gave an interview about it, oh. and they said like, you know, you've done a lot of outfits for Harry Styles. Like, yeah. does, does he always wear them? Yeah. And the designer was like. Oh no, Harry only wears like six of the 20 outfits I designed for oh, him. No. And he goes, but don't worry, he's got the rest of them cryogenically frozen. What? And everybody laughed, all the journalists, and the guy was like, no. <laughs> it turns out that <laughs> this is if we had money, right, this is what yeah. we would do with it. Harry Styles has an underground bunker in London where he cryogenically freezes bespoke <laughs> outfits that are made for him. Well, that's pretty sweet. You know what? I, I'll be honest with you. I don't. I just wear black t-shirts and jeans. Like To be fair, if I did yeah, that, people be well, You keep them frozen in a, yeah, in a bunker fr- and banger. They're, they're very crisp, yeah. Uh, would it's you, a cumber, my bunker, to be <laughs> fair. Would you like to see a YouTube video where the Boytown boys go to Harry's bunker and try on some outfits? Yeah, I mean, I think me trying to fit in any of his clothes would be good entertainment. I'd love to see you go on tour with the rest of the outfits that Harry didn't wear. Oh, speaking of clothes that don't fit, see on that thing we're shooting today? Yeah. I've already got my costume, right? Right. And the the costume home comes, I've got you a new fleece, because I'm playing a news agent, right? Very sexy. Swag. (laughs) And I look at the label, it's an XL. Yep. And I go, not good. I didn't go fit me. Yep. So just try it on anyway. Oh. I was like, <laughs> that's like saying to me, try on this 12 year old boy outfit. Yeah. I mean, like, it would fit you very nice. Oh, that would fit, yeah. but, but I know what you mean. Like, you weren't going to get smaller. No, but I knew I wasn't going to fit into it. Yeah, yeah. I knew it. And she was like, I'll put it on anyway. It's like, I fucking know what size I wear. But to humor her and to totally degrade myself I put it on oh well, show court <laughs> and then she was like oh it's a good thing we've already got the perfect outfit for you anyway I went <laughs> you know but yeah what's wrong with you fingers nothing just I don't like that you felt like that I just want you to know you're a very sexy strong man I'm a strong man very strong of will and very strong of soul and also physically very strong Okay. Well, if you're feeling really strong, why don't you plug some tour dates? Why don't you tell people about your tour? Listen. Oh, shit. Ben, why'd you do that? Ben just took his own phone oh, charger fuck. out of my phone. The way he did it as well was very, very sexually aggressive. It was sexually aggressive, you fucking pervert. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going on tour in November to December. I want a few dates. i got five dates. Listen, boy and listeners, I want you to, to let me know where you are located. Ben tells me using stalker technology because he's a creep freak snake rat <laughs> that there are people who listen to the podcast in these areas. By the way, the, the way he figures out is he just licks his finger and puts it up to the wind and detects yeah. it. And then you just put your tongue out to see what the temperature is in the air. But uh, I'm in Dublin at the International Bar and it's on the 7th of November. Now, that's a weird venue. You've been there. It's weird. The tickets, how do they work? They're, they're not online. It's at the door. Here's the way it works. It's very simple. You go to the wee Nando's beside the International Bar. Then you go over to the International. You walk in. You head but Dave. You sit down. <laughs> That's the way he wants to do it. By the way, read out all the, the, the accent of all the places. That's how you do okay. it. Okay. Um, I'm in Dublin on the 7th of November for the first leg of my da show. Stephen Gilly impression? Yeah. Oh, so disrespectful. He's dead. You what? know why he died? Oh. Natural causes. Okay. And for fuck's sake, I'm in Derry, hey. <laughs> what? <laughs> in London, Derry. I'm in London, Derry, Derry. Whatever you call it, Derry. On the 17th of November. I'm in the 7th of December, I'm in Oma. A Bogans. What? Why? What? Why are you doing that? Is that not, I'm just copying Arma Khan's voice, is that not? <laughs> right? Um. And, uh, what sort of voice was that? And on the 17th of December, I'm in Goey. Is that cool? <laughs> no, the Philippines, I think you mean. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're, I know. Didn't know you were doing the Asian leg, you're too, bro. On the 17th, on the 13th of December, Galway, I'm in Galway. Yeah. Better, better. I'm in Galway on the 13th. On the fucking 18th of December, you can't. <laughs> I'm in fucking London. 
mugs. The fucking museum of comedy where there's a fucking Dave Early exhibition. <laughs> so you're not just on a, a fucking, gig, it's an exhibition. It's a fucking Dave Early exhibition. How do people get tickets for your tour? www.shine.net Okay, sweet. Slash comedy. It's on the link on my Instagram and my Twitter. I'm just going to be a video on a proper launch soon. But the guy that's making a video is prioritising other things that he's getting paid for. This Sly. weekend, I'm at the Galway Comedy Festival. I'm doing a solo show. Oh, do the accent. Just, how are you? Galway. I'm doing my solo show. The Todd Father. Mick Lally Theatre. Tickets are on Vodafone Galway Comedy Festival website. I'm doing a solo show. I don't know if three people will go or 300. I've no idea nice. how tickets are going, but please, somebody go. Come. Although I'm still being paid for it, so if you don't go, I still get paid. Happy days, lads. Do you care, though? Yes, I do. No, do you really, though? No. <laughs> uh, no, I absolutely do. Unless nobody comes, in which, in which case I'll say I don't care. But I will yeah. care, and I'll go back to my hotel and cry. <laughs> and will you watch YouTube videos of better days? Probably. You no, do. that's not the accent I meant to. Do. Uh, third, uh, I think it's the third of November. I'm also going to be in Liverpool doing a show in Hot Water Comedy Club. So come down and check that out. No, no, no. I want I you. Know. I want you to do it in the voice of John Bishop. So I've hired Bishop to do yeah, my tour. John Bishop's doing your voiceover. For All me. right, mate. I will be in Hot Water Comedy Club. You're all me, Bish. You slow it down because the thing about Bish that's is right. he talks very, very slowly. But you're mates with Bish, so you know yeah. Bish better now. So what this is going to say, Hot Water Comedy Club, you got to check this fella out. 2nd of November, or it might be the 3rd, it's a Sunday night, Hot Water Comedy Club Right, now what's going to happen is, I don't know where, it's, it's like an RKO out of nowhere. Okay. Jamie Carragher's taking the mic, and he's going to okay, plug Okay, mate. Shit. Okay, well you can also go down and check out his show, would it be great? <laughs> That's decent, yeah. Yeah. Um. So, Hot Water Comedy Club, Liverpool, and then, I'm in the United States of America. Oh no! Do you need, do do it like a fucking cocksucker? All like right, this. listen up, you cocksuckers! On the sixth of November, I'm gonna be <laughs> so in Boston. I'm gonna be in Boston. Oh, li- listen up, you cocksuckers! This motherfucker. Be in the Ellis Room in this Boston. This motherfucker here. Where, where you gonna be, cocksucker? The Ellis Room in Boston. Fuck me in the ass. On the seventh. What the fuck goes on there? Uh, comedy, okay. On the seventh. Fucking of no- comedy. On the seventh of November, I'm gonna be in the Galway oh, Bay f- Bar. What the fuck? You in, in Galway? Chicago. And then you in no, Galway? it's in the Chicago. Fucking, fucking right? shit. What are you, a fucking idiot? Are you a fucking wise guy? It's in Chicago. This guy's a Chicago cocksucker motherfucker. Then on the 10th, I'm going to be in Philadelphia, selling a pub and kitchen, all right? You want tickets for that? Go to my social media. What, a kitchen? No, it's in the pub and kitchen. And the fucking pub and kitchen. I'm doing a gig in the back of the kitchen, Does it have a fucking name, that pub? By the deep fat fries, Sona. What? Sona. Sona what? Come check it out. And now you're learning. Boston, Philadelphia, Chicago. Tickets will be on my social media. Please come to them because it'd be so awkward if I go all the way over there and nobody's there. Ben tells me we don't have any listeners in America. Jimmy Harrison with the first question. Okay. He says, Have you guys ever been fraped on social media? Hey man, every week it was called Tweetback. (laughs) Jimmy. Well, that was that oh, feature. Well. I'm so glad that it's gone because it makes the podcast way more. You know relaxed. what? I think people want it back, and I think we should bring it back. Bring it back. Only on the live ones. You know the way that song is the song that's going to be every week. <laughs> yeah, yeah. On our radio <laughs> <Yeah>. show. <laughs> Sing it back to me. I was saying the style of Gary Barlow, was it? There must be something about that song because. See, what I think it was, one of the guys. Who came on the radio show? Well, explain this. So every week in the yeah. radio show, we do a nineties dance cover where a good local music artist comes on. A good looking local a cover. music artist always has yeah. to be good looking. And we had Nathan O'Regan do Maloko bring it back. Can I do the X Factor voice? Yep, Nathan O'Regan. Then this week we had Connor Scott come on. Connor and Scott. You and I heard him practicing it, and uh-huh. we were like, "Everybody's going to come and do this." But, but then what does he do? What's he uh-huh. throwing here? Yeah. What is that? A curveball. It's a curveball. It and it's come back and it hit you right in the ah. forehead. Because what did he do? Remix. Yeah. Mash up. R- 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 remix. Ma- 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 ma. Yo, man. It's my man, Connor Scott. <laughs> coming in hot. BBC Radio Monster with the 90s. <laughs> Mash up, baby. So, uh, but you know what? Great. The con man, that's what we call him because we're friends. He maybe explained why that song may make appearances. We were like, again, we don't know why we did it in this style. We went, Connor, where did you come up with that song? Yeah. And he goes, well, I went on to Spotify and hit 90s dance classics and it came up. So people must be Spotifying it and getting it through that. I want somebody to do you know? Maniac. What's that? 
<laughs> oh no, where'd that work? Oh no. <laughs> uh, you know, there's so fucking disrespectful, you cocksucker motherfucker. Mick Conlon. Okay, Mick Conlon. Mickey, you're so fine, you're so fine, you blow my dick. Violin Mick says this. Ninja Bear. That must be me. I'm not nin- No, he's a Ninja Bear. I have it on good authority. You were a promising wrestling talent. If the two of you hadn't I... become comedians, what would you still... What would you be doing now? Also, would Boy Town still exist? Mick, six questions there. I'm going to focus on one. Dave, uh-huh. were you a wrestler? I trained. Nerd alert! Nerd alert! Nerd alert! Oh, Mom! <laughs> says the guy. You were a wrestler, dude? Says the guy. Whatcha? Whatcha? Hoos, hoos. The guy. Stunner. The guy who plays football every week. Yeah, football's yeah. hard. Yeah. So was I when I wrestled. That's why you weren't allowed to wrestle anymore. Correct. But no, listen, Mick gets trained by a guy. I mean, this guy trains him. He just happens to be a signed WWE wrestler and he said I was good at wrestling. Whatever. So talk me through. Whatever. So you were a wrestling prodigy. Is that what yeah, you're trying I, to say? I wanted to be a wrestler when I was a little boy. Then, as I got older, I did a bit of training with Pro Wrestling Ulster, who, believe it or not, are now defunct. <laughs> um, they were going for years, surely? Yeah, but they've, they've rebranded, I think, to Titanic Wrestling now. Oh. Yeah, I mean, that's doomed to sink too. But, I mean, listen, there, there's a lot of time. Ta- uh, that joke, only joking, they're good guys, like they really are. But, they're, they're fantastic. You said they're that the, like such a joke. They're the best. Oh, they're good guys, they really listen, are. They're good guys, they're the best. Fantastic. But, um, I just uh, started. What age were you when you were doing this? 10 years ago 33 <laughs> <laughs> I bossed that up I was 23 but I did you it you lied about your age yeah I did it um, and then I started doing FNT Friday Night Therapy the sketch comedy group now the wrestling was fun albeit it was training for like 6 hours on Sunday and I just didn't have the time you know to do Oh my god! Like, tonight <laughs> of all nights when the gay marriage bill is going to pass I thought that was my uh, my <laughs> thought my knee was the chair and started stroking it, which is even weirder yeah. that you sexually stroke yeah. chairs. Hey, did I tell well, you? I was on a plane once and I was really tired, right? <laughs> I was really tired. And I'm on a plane and uh, put your yeah. hand like this, like yeah. on the armrest. Yeah. And I didn't realise that somebody's arm was on the armrest yeah. and I put mine right on top of it. <laughs> I was feeling the end of it like this, like it was the end of a wee, a wee armrest. And then I had um, to say, sorry. I didn't know that was your arm. I have a story similar to that that you'll really enjoy. Yeah. I was uh, on a flight to America with my sister. Yeah. And she was in the middle seat. There's me on the at the at the aisle, and this Asian man just sleeping at the window, right? <laughs> and I just I sleep very much like I'm dead. I just cross yeah. my arms and yeah. playing and go. <laughs> right. My sister likes a pillow, so my sister goes to sleep. I wake up and just watch a movie with the earphones in, <laughs> and then. <laughs> The sister wakes up and goes, pillow, pillow behind her neck. And this Asian man just sitting beside her. My sister in her sleep had just grabbed the pillow off the Asian guy. I was just holding it while sleeping on the pillow, snoring in his face. It's so sly. She looked like a really, really laid back racist. Like, oh, fuck me. Yeah. No, I'll have that. And then she did it. She so did disrespectful. It. Yeah. But like that, was, that was funny. I like I love that. that. So, uh, what happened with the, would you ever get back into the wrestling what was your wrestling name Juicy Dick the dickhead <laughs> yeah, knobhead <I'm> a, <laughs> yeah knobhead I had my finishing move just slapping a big strap on the knob unicorn of people <laughs> but yeah I did enjoy it and I was in much better shape in those days sadly uh, Nathan Concy Concy yeah. says hey shaft masters and cum blasters arse. If you boys had the choice between having to fight a fully grown pit and vein with only Andy Parsons for backup or have to go on a quest or return an out of day club sandwich to ask the Lauren with Alan Todd, Purple Tooth and the Dick Eater, which would you choose? I mean... See, Andy Parsons would be good for backup for the pit and vein because he's the only one who could calm it down. Right, okay. You be you, I'll be Andy Parsons. <laughs> I don't want you to ask me about how to the okay. pit and vein. Andy, are you Andy Parsons? Andy Parsons off the TV. Andy, I need your help. Why? I need to track down this pit and vein. I know you know about the pit and vein, Andy. 
The what? The pitten vein, I know you know. The bloody pitten vein. Yeah. <laughs> you sound like another Andy. <laughs> He's yeah. asleep. Yeah, but I need, I need your help. I can't do any more sleeps okay. in my throat, but yeah. Uh, yeah. You know what? I think getting Alan Todd and Purple Tooth in the car together. And the dick eater. And the, oh, no. Not the dick eater. Shut up. Why Why have you summoned me here? Because I need to go to a fucking ass dumping line. My club sandwich is out of date. Why? What am I supposed to have with my bitter? Why have you summoned the dick eater? Because you can fucking drive I can't and purple tooth's fucking blitzed <laughs> but the only thing about that is I can't eat your dick it's too small I know but you my, my dick's small my dick's bigger than me fucking body ball you pedo well give us it <laughs> no because I need to eat it no and then he glasses you with <sighs> yeah. a bottle of butter ah. and then we don't get the lauren so yeah I think I'd rather calm the pit and fiend with Andy Parsons that's all the questions on twitter so you get them on Instagram. Le Twitter. <laughs> oh, I put a video up and it's about the DUP and people are hating it. Are they hating it? Well, somebody <laughs> said, I have an inkling this might be fake. What gave you that idea, bro? <laughs> somebody <laughs> else wrote, not your best, Shane. <laughs> and they're, 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 uh, Bio is troll. Let me just oh, say cool, something. Man. Let, let me just say something. There's a question from Niall Bullock. Guess what, Niall? We're not answered because you don't follow Boy Town. <laughs> so that's that. God, no. Glenn Lindsay, the man himself, has asked us a question saying, Will we ever see the return of Tweetback? I really miss Shane's, oh no, <laughs> wheezy laugh when he first sees a Cunanan picture of the Davis created. Why are you, uh, Weezy? I'm Weezy because I have asthma, but I don't really have it anymore. You know what I mean? Um, there's not a question from the Chungle Book. It's just a picture of these The drawn. Chungle Book? Yeah. What's a Chungle I think, Book? I think it's a guy whose name's Chung. Ah. And he's, got a, and he's just drawn a picture of you instead. What do you think of that? <laughs> ben, I'll send you that and you can pop this picture up. That's so fucking disrespectful. First of all, <laughs> my fingers aren't longer than my head. Um, and are your also, fing- are your fingers dicks? Yeah, why have I got a cock nose? <laughs> Look at the way my hand. Oh, the only thing decent about it is my hair. To be so fair, that's that's a very much a you pose that it's doing. Uh, it's taken from an actual photo I had done at the waterfront. The salad, so fing- so the salad fingers on the on the, the mic are very enjoyable. Salad fingers on the mic. Would you like to ride my bike? There's a dildo on the seat. I hate it, but I love it. But I enjoy that from the Chungle book very much. Um, Wilson Davidson um, has said, What's up to SRNBC, Snake Rat Man Boy Cheeky, going international recently and having to miss the world's most unique and calm pug- podcast? Podcast? Yep. Look, here. here's what's going to happen. We're a bit like Emil Heskey. Shit. No. We're actually pretty good if you look at the stats. But oh, no. sometimes we're going to miss but we make up for it with good performances. So some weeks, the boys aren't going to be here, but we have great substitutes. We have like Ole Gunnar Solskjaer on the bench, mm-hmm. ready to come on. See you, M. <laughs> the Redwood original, the the dirty bastard, Michael O'Neill, as he was tagged in a previous uh, post a few weeks ago. He said, hey, buff daddy and wee titty. Thoughts on Ruiz versus Joshua's Reem? Don't ever talk. Thoughts on Ruiz versus Joshua rematch? Does the Adonis reclaim his belt? Or does we fat Ruiz do it again? <laughs> or does it matter? So disrespectful. Or does it matter because we're all living in a world of simulation? Oh. Uh, when says, is that fight? Thanks. Fasse, fasse. Fasse. In December. December? Second, I believe, yeah. Um, yeah, I think, I think Ruiz is going to win. Yeah, I mean, I think AJ's going to knock him in the first round. I like Ruiz. He's a nice guy. I'm glad... He's he's making he's putting food on the table for his family, but I just think Joshua's got mugged off with being knocked out last time. He did put Ruiz in as we bought him. Yeah, I think I think Joshua should win the fight. He should Ruiz is a smaller guy. He just should hold him off. But yeah. if he lets him in close, Ruiz could knock him. It's it's a very interesting fight. It's in Saudi Arabia, which is weird. They're going there for the patch on the boxing, obviously. Yeah, true. You know, of course, for the historic not, significance. No, not nope. for the money. Not. Let me just point that out. Um. Uh, by the way, is loads of wrestling happening in Saudi Arabia now? Yeah. 
because there's loads of money coming from Saudi Arabia. They're and all... is it like, are all the old guys coming back just because yeah, there's cause, loads of dough? Because the Saudi Arabians don't know any of the new guys. So like, <laughs> uh, we want to bring Hulk Hogan back, please. We will have Hulk Hogan fight. Do yeah. We'll have up and coming guy Undertaker. And he will fight Nate Boy, Ric Flair. Uh, no, sorry, he's dead. He's but... back. No. Bring him. <laughs> we'll have him resuscitated. He will be in Harry Styles close bunker. Um, Owen Austin. Austin. <laughs> I said. What? Hello, Comboy and Bumboy. Either one works. I will leave you to work out who is who. Question. Would you rather have a pe- <laughs> Oh, one of these ones. <laughs> <laughs> would you rather have a penis the size of the gap in Dave's teeth? Or a gap in your teeth the size of Dave's penis? Well, I would love to have a dick as big as the gap in your teeth. <laughs> or what's the other one? Or... Would you rather have a dick as big as a gap in my teeth or a penis? As, I don't know. He said, would you rather have a penis the size of the gap in Dave's teeth right. or a gap in your teeth the size of Dave's penis? Oh, definitely a gap in my teeth the size of your penis. Yeah, I do have a gap in my teeth the size of your penis. Yeah. That's very funny content. Cheers for the question, Owen. Don't ask the question again. Um, <laughs> oh, no. The villain's back. Killian Cahill. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm the bad boy, Killian Cahill. <laughs> he said, <laughs> Hello, white squiggly serpent. It is Muhahaha, the evil villain. Oh no. <laughs> Here's my attempt at a quack for you beautiful boys. Come on, you can do it. In an interview with Conan O'Brien, Kesha claims that she once got intimate with a ghost. Crazy, I know. The nameless spirit began caressing her and the two proceeded to... <laughs> fuck. But hey... It's not the first time spirits have boned a mildly famous celebrity. But my question is, have you ever busted your banjo string? Uh, Killian, I like that you tried. Uh, yeah. Like you say, you tried to do a quack, yeah. but it was shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, call a spade a spade yeah. and call a shit quack the shit quack. What the fuck are you do? <laughs> go on, get another hobby. Uh, I'm only joking. We appreciate anyone having to go he, to quack. He's the villain though, so watch out. Watch your back. Yeah, oh shit, I shouldn't have said that. No. Oh. But, um, my neck. Have you ever torn your banjo cord? You have, haven't you? No, I haven't. All right, okay. Well, first of all, I thought always thought that was an urban myth. Yeah, but no, but it, it can't help. Listen, guys, if you've ever torn your banjo cord, send us photos, please. We'll talk about even it. if it's repaired years. Later. Yeah, no, I mean ideally, <laughs> let us just let us. Do see. you know anybody that's happened to you right now? Yes, several people. Did it all happen the same way? Yeah, I mean, I think basically. Oh, oh listen, by the way, by listen, the way, listen, does it reattach? Listen, sometimes no, you need to get circumcised. So a few of the guys have done. <gasps> listen, shalom. All I'm gonna say is that my friends who I know that this has happened to. Yeah. It's gonna be legal from midnight. Ah, uh, right, right, right. Yeah, you know, listen. Cause they do a bunch of foreskin. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but yeah. Listen, Ronaldo's asked us a question, saying, glad you're back, mummy. Daddy had Uncle Mickey over last week. Uh, what did you bring us back from the duty free? Uh, got it here. Uh, oh, man, why don't you hit your mic a bit more, you fucking dunce? <laughs> uh, they didn't allow me to bring it back, and they do some check, but uh, I brought back this smile. But here's what I really want to know. With all of the gallivanting that Mr. Nationwide is doing... Where would the, your ideal holiday destinations be if money was no object? We are actually going to do a podcast in Saudi Arabia, yes. aren't we, next yeah. week? Because of our so, passion for podcasts. Yeah, I mean, would, you, would you like, somewhere I've never been in the Caribbean, would you like to do that? I mean, yeah, I think so. I mean, I would. It'd be nice, but would it be a top of my destinations? Nah. For me, I really want to experience New Orleans. Yeah, New like Orleans would be, be class. A really nice place to go. You haven't go. been to San Diego, have you? Haven't? Nope. You'd like it. I you know where else like I really want to go to? I want to go to, to Poland. I, I want to go oh, to... Oh, money's no object, listen, man. <laughs> I want to go to Auschwitz. I'm like my history. I want to go there. Yeah. I want to see how my family um, manned the concentration camps back in the day. I need to see Dude. that. Dude. Don't be joking. I just want to enjoy the history. I, I actually don't know if I could go. I think I would just... I think I, I was going to say it would be too sad. I mean, I think that's I mean, the idea. Yeah. But like, I don't know. I just think... I just think it would be really... If also, I was going on a trip, also, I'd like to have fun. I, I would be also, all sad. I'd be like, you oh. look way too much like the enemy to be in a place like that. I mean, if ever, if Hitler was to go, mm, 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 it's that, that face. You actually look like you could just, you would just, you'd be one of the guys that would go, 
do it. No, I'd be one. I'd be like that, uh-huh. but secretly, I'm getting them all out. And then just back around the circle again, like, <laughs> no, like Ramsey no, no, Bolton. No. You no. have them out. No, like, I get them on. out. I get them out. I know it was pretty sly with it. I mean, I don't, I don't condone that at all. Yeah. Um, Calvin Craig, I said good morning. Boys. Calvin Craig, Craig calling. Calvin Craig, Calvin Craig, Calvin Craig, answer now. Don't, oh, don't, don't put, ask. don't put me. Oh, I was waiting for you to come. Nah, it's a shit song. I'm not, I'm not giving you the credit for that. Okay. Absolutely loving the sneaky tips about the coffee machines. Yep. Did you know that you can actually squeeze two flat whites into a large cup at the barista machines in this bar? Oh, whoa, wee. That's a lot of caffeine. I had one the other morning, got halfway to work and realised I forgot my car. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, my question is, how much money do you boys make a year before taxes? <laughs> I mean, I'm going to clap. That's the best question. Yeah, that's I really good. Know, that's back. really good. Well done, um, Calvin Craig. I mean, I can't announce it because my taxes have been declared for this year. And hey, <laughs> the sums won't correlate. Let's just say that. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, listen, after our trip to Saudi Arabia. How come you do your uh, tax file in the Isle of Man? What? Isle well, of Man? Actually, even we were talking about going to the Caribbean. Oh, right, right. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. business investments there. Um, the last question. I don't make enough. This week is from... Gabrielle Campbell. Okay. Probably Gabriel to be fair. <laughs> um Formula One drivers have excellent, excellent names. What's your Formula One name? I mean, like if I was driving in a Formula One car, my name would be Dave Elliott. <laughs> yeah. I mean, is, is that makes it sound like there's like a generator, like an internet yeah. generator to to get it. I'm gonna say uh Do you know what I'm gonna do instead? Because that uh I sent the question don't make sense. Yeah. But because uh, money be Sheen Todd. Uh, I'm going to do a rap name generator for me. A and rap you. name? Yep. Alrighty. All What's right, your rapper right. name ge- uh, generator? So I'm going to put in your name. So okay. oh, it's asking a couple of questions. So Dave, what's your, I'll answer this honestly. Who's your favourite TV character? My favourite TV character? That's really tough. I mean, we, what, who's your favourite TV character? Ned Flanders. Ned Flanders out of all TV characters. Well, is I'll it, put mine is in it a cartoon first. character? I'll, no, I'll put mine in first. Your real life first name, Shane. Your real life last name. Todd, name of a criminal, Ronnie Biggs, <laughs> the great train robber. Uh, I mean, was he great? He got caught. <laughs> and now he's dead. I mean, how good is he? Something really pleasant, e.g. flowers, kittens. I'm going to write sunrise. An adjective to describe your your music. I'm going to say <laughs> uh, tough. Name of your favourite childhood pet. York, because I had it named after Don't York of Manchester United. Okay. Write me some rapper names. Here we go. I could be the TOD. So why, what is the relevance to your fucking animal's name there? I could be Tough Face Shane. No. Inspector Tough. Shanus T. That's my Irish That's your right Irish name. Sunrise Biggs. That is actually pretty <laughs> class. What's up, baby? It's Sunrise Biggs. Uh, Shane Vane. Uh, Vane Shane's a name you do go by. Shantastic. Uh, Flanders Flanders Flu. Not really. I don't think I'd be taken too seriously. <laughs> Shanna Donna. That's also your Irish Biggs name. Biggs Riggs. Tough Man. Abs Tough. Biggs Riggs is Riggs, isn't it? Sunrise Ronnie. Big York? <laughs> no, that's me. <laughs> What's up, baby? It's Big right. York. You know what I'm saying? Let's do that for me, please. Oh, one more. Me? Yeah. One more. I don't know if this one's that hard. York Ronnie. <laughs> nah, it's not sweet, right? Okay. Try mine. So, your favourite TV character? My favourite TV character, I'm going to say Cartman. <laughs> <laughs> when you're wearing a winter coat, you look like yeah, Cartman. I know. Just... <laughs> look, I, just, I do not. I've got a wee woolly hat. Your real life first name, Dave. David. No, Dave. 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 Your real life last name, Elliot. 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 The name of a criminal, Dammer. <laughs> Spell his surname, D A H. D A H M E R, Dammer. Oh no. Yeah. Uh, something really pleasant, like flowers or kittens. Chocolat, but spelled like that. Not chocolate, chocolat. Uh, adjective to describe your music? Fly. <laughs> the name of your favourite childhood pet? 
Well, listen, I'm going to say Dick because I had two goldfish, Moby and Dick, and Dick died first, RIP Dick. Um, Shout out to Dick, especially on a night like tonight. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so you could be these. Okay. David Donna. Oh, hi. Dave Grave. <laughs> Dammer Palmer. <laughs> Dave Wave. Dave Tastic, D.E. Cartman, Cartman Koo. <laughs> That's actually what he's known as in Taiwan. Ben. Name of this week's podcast, Cartman, Cartman Koo. Inspector Fly. Dammer Bomber. <laughs> Whoa. D.E. Grave Dave. The Real Dave. Flyface Dave. Chocolat Dammer. <laughs> <laughs> Read this one out. Big Dick. <laughs> Big York and Big Dick. <laughs> D.E. Dammer. Flyman. Dave Normus. Kulo cool, Elliot. Dick Dammer. <laughs> Dava Dava. These are the kind of songs Dava Donna might perform. That would be my cocktail, Dava Dava. So, <laughs> these are some of the names apparently you perform. I'm still Dave from the streets. They were good chocolate. Dick. Dick better have my chocolate. <laughs> That's Dick. his week's podcast name. Dick said so. Dick better two, have my chocolate. Two, three, four, chocolate. Don't talk to me about chocolate. <laughs> Bling a ding, Dick. I ain't no dammer. Follow the chocolate. Cartman is ready. Ultra Dave goes flip. I is fly, don't you forget it. Dick face robbers. The Cartman effect. Flipping chocolate. <laughs> That's it. Flippin' Chocola. Dave is as Dave does. So fly, I think I'll scream. And the story of Chocola. <laughs> <laughs> ben, you take your pick as to which one you want uh, as the podcast title. What, that what time are we on? Oh, I know it's six. Okay, we'll wrap it up. We're two multiplied by ten plus one. <laughs> <laughs> Big Flippin' Dick and Yorkie Chocola. Ah, <laughs> uh, Chocola and Big York are out. Thank you very much for listening. <laughs> The podcast is on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud. It comes out every single Thursday. The video podcast on YouTube. Just search Boytown Podcast. Thanks very much to Ben for producing, aka the Snake Rat, aka Four Creatives, F O U R. He has a website, Four Creatives. You can see his video work. If you want him to shoot you having a fight with a badger, he'll do it. If you want him to shoot you doing keepy ups with a banana, he'll do it. If you want to shoot you just going up and pranking homeless guys by digging them, he will do that probably for free. He'll do that. Um, also, we sell gear on our Facebook page. No, we don't. We sell merchandise. All right. Facebook Boy Town Podcast. Ben, what's the score in the match? Oh, what minute is it in? Oh! Thank you very much for listening. Oh, Peace out, chocolate. Bye.